to leave it alone, huh? I'll make you a sandwich. The casting process for the 1972 TV series, set in San Francisco, was a meticulous task. The producers wanted a perfect blend of experience and fresh talent. For the lead role, they chose Carl Malden, an experienced actor who had already made a mark in the film industry. His rugged looks and powerful screen presence made him an ideal fit for the role. On the other hand, Michael Douglas, who was relatively new to the industry, was chosen for the role of the young detective. His youthful energy and eagerness to learn were deemed perfect for the role. The chemistry between the two actors was tested through a series of read-throughs and screen tests. The producers were looking for a dynamic that would translate well on screen. The duo's contrasting personalities and acting styles proved to be a winning combination. The supporting cast was chosen with equal care. The producers wanted actors who could hold their own against the two leads. They chose actors who had a solid track record in television and film. The casting process was not just about selecting actors based on their resume or looks. The producers were also looking for actors who could bring depth to their characters. They wanted actors who could make the characters relatable and real to the audience. In the end, the casting for the series was a success. The actors gelled well together and brought their characters to life. The series went on to become a hit, thanks in part to its stellar casting. No number. No way. My daddy gave me this number, you dig? That's how I'm on to you. The director of the 1972 TV series, known for its gritty and realistic portrayal of police work, brought a unique vision to the screen. With a background in documentaries, he approached the show with a sense of authenticity, often insisting on filming on location in San Francisco. This gave the series a sense of place and texture that was unusual for television at the time. The director worked closely with the cast and crew, fostering a collaborative atmosphere on set. He encouraged the actors to bring their own ideas to the characters, resulting in nuanced and believable performances. The director also worked closely with the writers, ensuring that the stories were grounded in reality and that the characters' actions were motivated by their personalities and experiences. In terms of style, the director favored a straightforward, unadorned approach. He eschewed flashy camera movements and special effects, instead focusing on the performances and the story. This lent the series a sense of quiet intensity, making even the most mundane scenes compelling. The director's creative influences included classic films noir and the works of writers like Dashiell Hammett and Raymond Chandler. He was also influenced by his own experiences growing up in San Francisco, which gave him a deep understanding of the city and its people. Despite the challenges of working in television, the director remained committed to his vision for the series. He saw it as an opportunity to tell compelling stories and to explore the complexities of police work and urban life. His dedication and passion are evident in every episode of the show. Years old before this year is over, and before my life is over, Get I will... The Streets of San Francisco, a classic TV series that first aired in 1972, offers a unique blend of drama, crime, and adventure. This show has had a profound effect on many viewers' lives, including mine. As a young boy, I was captivated by the thrilling car chases and suspenseful investigations. To this day, I can still recall specific episodes and scenes which goes to show the lasting impression it left on me. Many fascinating stories surround this iconic series. For instance, did you know that the famous car cam technique was introduced in this show? Or that it starred a real-life father and son duo, Carl Malden and Michael Douglas? There are also surprising tales about behind-the-scenes feuds and unexpected friendships. Perhaps you have a treasured memory or personal connection to this TV series. We would love to hear about it. Share your stories and experiences in the comments section below. Let's reminisce together about this unforgettable piece of television history. And stay tuned for more fun, shocking, and emotional facts about the streets of San Francisco. The production of the 1972 TV series was a significant endeavor. The set design was meticulous, with every detail carefully planned to create an authentic 1970s San Francisco atmosphere. The show's creators used a mix of standing sets and location shooting. The standing sets, including the police station and detectives' homes, were built on sound stages. These sets were designed to be versatile, allowing for a variety of scenes to be filmed in the same location. The location shooting was equally important. The show's creators wanted to capture the unique character of San Francisco so they filmed on location throughout the city. 
This presented logistical challenges, as the crew had to navigate the city's hilly terrain and traffic. However, the result was a show that truly resonated with viewers, providing a captivating glimpse into the streets of San Francisco. One innovative technique employed during production was the use of lightweight, handheld cameras. This allowed the camera operators to move more freely, capturing more dynamic and realistic footage. The show's creators also used split diopter lenses, which allowed them to focus on two different planes within the same shot. This technique added depth and complexity to the visual storytelling. Despite the challenges, the production of the 1972 TV series was a success. The show's authentic set design, location shooting, and innovative techniques combined to create a captivating viewing experience. The result was a show that has endured, remaining a beloved part of television history. Hello? Uh, Mr. Joseph Ness, please. The television series, which debuted in 1972, is a classic example of police procedural drama. Set in a bustling city, the show follows the lives of two detectives as they solve crimes and uphold the law. The main character, a seasoned detective, is known for his sharp instincts and deep knowledge of the criminal underworld. His partner, a young and ambitious detective, brings a fresh perspective and new ideas to the table. Together, the duo makes a formidable team, taking on cases that range from petty crimes to more serious offenses. The show does an excellent job of balancing the action and drama of the cases with the personal lives of the characters, giving viewers a well-rounded look at what it's like to be a detective. The series also explores important social issues of the time, such as corruption and discrimination. These themes add depth and complexity to the storylines, making the show more than just a simple police procedural. Despite being over 40 years old, the show remains relevant and engaging today. Its timeless themes and well-developed characters continue to captivate audiences, making it a must-watch for fans of the genre. The show's two leads, played by Carl Malden and Michael Douglas, deliver strong performances throughout the series. Malden, a veteran actor with years of experience, brings a sense of gravitas and wisdom to his role. Douglas, on the other hand, is a rising star, full of energy and enthusiasm. Together, they make a dynamic duo that is easy to root for. Overall, the television series is a classic example of police procedural drama at its finest. With its well-developed characters, engaging storylines, and timeless themes, it is a show that continues to resonate with audiences today. You never taught me that life and love are the same. Moreover, the music in the TV series was carefully crafted to enhance the storytelling. The composers and musicians worked closely with the creators to ensure that each musical piece resonated with the emotions and themes of the show. By blending different instruments and melodies, they were able to create a unique soundtrack that captured the essence of the era. The music not only set the mood for each scene, but also helped to deepen the audience's connection to the characters and their experiences. Through their collaboration, the composers and musicians brought an extra layer of depth and richness to the TV series, making it a truly immersive viewing experience. Now, I have reason to believe that it's a uh, high-wired Joey named Cesar Volnack. In the early 70s TV series, Michael Douglas sported a distinct look that caught Marvel Studios' attention. Years later, they would base the young Hank Pym in Avengers Endgame on Douglas's appearance during this show. Specifically, the scene where Pym runs down the hallway mirrors several shots from the series, even matching details like his hairstyle and jacket. Dick Van Patten, an actor known for his role in the series, had an early career highlight when he appeared alongside Alfred Lunt and Lynn Fontan in the Broadway play, Oh Mistress Mine in 1946. As a teenager, Van Patten portrayed their leftist ideology espousing son. On the other hand, Darlene Carr, a notable actress in her own right, shares an interesting family connection. She is the niece of musicians Dennis Farnon and Robert Farnon. It wasn't in my mom's stuff. I asked somebody to check the records. One of the most iconic scenes in the series occurs in the episode The 30-Year Pin. Here, Detective Stone, played by Carl Malden, confronts a suspect in a dark alley. As they face off, the tension builds until a violent struggle ensues. This scene stands out due to its expert direction, gripping performances, and striking cinematography. Carl Malden recalls the intensity of filming this scene, stating it was a tough one, but I think it really captured the raw emotion and danger that can come with police work. Indeed, the close quarters fighting and limited lighting create an atmosphere of unease and suspense, 
Cinematographer Richard Rawlings used strategic shadows and dim light sources to enhance the dramatic effect. Another notable scene takes place in the episode Poison Snow, where Detective Stone and his partner, Inspector Keller, investigate a murder linked to heroin trafficking. A car chase through the hilly streets of San Francisco exemplifies the era's gritty realism. With tight camera angles and quick cuts, the sequence keeps viewers on edge as our heroes pursue the criminals. Director Walter Grauman shares his thoughts on capturing the city's essence during the chase San Francisco offered us so many unique locations and challenges. We wanted to make sure we showed both the beauty and the darkness lurking beneath. By combining fast-paced action with stunning visuals, Grauman succeeded in creating an unforgettable moment in the series. These iconic scenes resonated deeply with audiences, leaving lasting impressions that contribute to the show's enduring popularity. They demonstrate how thoughtful direction, powerful acting, and innovative camera work can elevate even episodic television into timeless works of art. Give you five short. Nick, please. Nick, get this bum off me. In the early 1970s, a popular TV series captivated audiences with its gripping stories of crime and justice in San Francisco. Two notable actors graced the screen, Dick Van Patten, who later founded Natural Balance Pet Food Company, and Michael Douglas, whose life would take many exciting turns. After the series ended, Dick Van Patten pursued other interests while Michael Douglas continued acting. He even penned an obituary tribute for his co-star, Carl Malden, when he passed away in 2009. But before that, Douglas had another significant milestone in his personal life. At the turn of the millennium, on December 31, 1999, he got engaged to Catherine Zeta-Jones, marking the start of their journey together as a couple. What's the matter? No word. Steiner. Leo Steiner. Released in 1972, this TV series quickly gained popularity due to its engaging storyline and realistic portrayal of police work. Set in San Francisco, the show highlighted various social issues of the time, contributing to discussions around crime, punishment, and urban life. Its gritty depiction of street-level law enforcement was a departure from earlier shows, making it stand out and capture audience attention. Featuring two lead actors, one playing a seasoned detective and the other his young partner, the series explored generational differences and mentor-mentee relationships. Audiences connected with these relatable characters, leading to strong viewer loyalty and influence on popular culture. Moreover, the show served as a backdrop for many notable guest stars who were either established or up-and-coming actors during that era. By providing them a platform, the series helped shape the careers of several talents, further solidifying its cultural significance. The show also reflected the zeitgeist of the early 70s by incorporating contemporary music into its soundtrack and addressing pertinent societal concerns. In doing so, it left an indelible mark on television history, paving the way for future cop dramas and influencing the genre as a whole. Cobb gave me his wife's number. I have to call her. In 1993, Carl Malden received a significant honor, his induction into the Steel City Hall of Fame in Gary, Indiana. Malden's friendship with Michael Douglas's father, Kirk, dated back to the 1930s, a bond that would later lead to their collaboration in the critically acclaimed TV series. On November 11, 2004, Michael Douglas presented his former co-star with the Monte Cristo Award of the Eugene O'Neill Theatre Center in Waterford, Connecticut, for the Lifetime Achievement Award. Malden joined an esteemed group of recipients, including Jason Robards, Zoe Caldwell, Edward Albee, August Wilson, and Brian Dennehy. This accolade was a testament to Malden's long and successful career in the film industry, which spanned over six decades and included numerous memorable performances in films and television shows. The 1972 TV series, The Streets of San Francisco, received positive reviews from both critics and audiences. The show was praised for its gritty and realistic portrayal of police work, as well as the strong chemistry between its two leads, Carl Malden and Michael Douglas. Critics applauded the show's writing, direction, and acting. In a review for the New York Times, critic John J. O'Connor wrote, The Streets of San Francisco is an unusually engrossing police series. Carl Malden is excellent as the veteran cop, and Michael Douglas is impressive as his young partner. The series also resonated with audiences, who appreciated the show's fast-paced action and complex characters, 
According to TV Guide, The Streets of San Francisco is a top-notch police drama with strong performances and sharp writing. The show's success was reflected in its numerous award nominations and wins. Over the course of its five-season run, The Streets of San Francisco received four Emmy nominations for Outstanding Drama Series, and Carl Malden won an Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series in 1975. The show also received a Golden Globe nomination for Best TV Drama in 1973. These accolades were a testament to the hard work and dedication of everyone involved in the show, from the writers and directors to the actors and crew members. The awards and nominations were a mark of the show's impact on the television industry and its enduring legacy as a classic police drama. The show's success also helped to launch the careers of its two lead actors, Carl Malden and Michael Douglas, who went on to have successful careers in film and television. In conclusion, The Streets of San Francisco was a critically acclaimed and popular TV series that left a lasting impact on the television industry. Its positive reception and numerous award nominations and wins were a testament to the show's quality and the talent of everyone involved in its production. It's like thunder. I mean, you hear it. You don't know where it's coming from. Joey. Look, maybe they... In the acting world, both Carl Malden and Dick Van Patten made their marks through different paths. Before his time on the small screen, Malden gained his first theater experience in the play Golden Boy with the group theater. On the other hand, Van Patten, known for his role as Tom Bradford in Eight is Enough, had previously attended the professional children's school in New York City. Interestingly enough, Bradford was recognized as one of TV Guide's top 50 greatest TV dads, ranking at number 33. These notable actors brought their unique experiences and backgrounds to their roles in the popular television series. During the filming of the popular 70s TV series, the camaraderie between the two leads was evident. Carl Malden, a seasoned actor, took newcomer Michael Douglas under his wing. Douglas later recalled how Malden's support and guidance helped him grow as an actor. The show's tight filming schedule was challenging. Each episode was shot in just seven days, with the crew working long hours to meet the deadline. Despite the pressure, the team remained dedicated and passionate about their work. One memorable episode was filmed at the famous San Francisco landmark, the Golden Gate Bridge. The crew faced a unique challenge when fog rolled in, reducing visibility, but they adapted, using the fog to create a moody, suspenseful atmosphere that added to the episode's tension. The show's success was also due to its commitment to authenticity. The producers hired local San Francisco residents as extras, and the scripts often incorporated real-life San Francisco events and issues. This attention to detail helped the show resonate with its audience. Behind the scenes, the show also had its light-hearted moments. The crew often played pranks on each other, and Malden was known for his sense of humor. His laughter could often be heard echoing through the studio, even during the most intense scenes. In conclusion, the making of this 70s TV series was a testament to the dedication, creativity, and camaraderie of its cast and crew. Despite the challenges, they managed to create a show that not only entertained, but also offered a vivid portrayal of San Francisco in the 70s. You got this Borman in the tank, don't you? We got nothing without the bullet. In 1944, when he was just 15, Dick Van Patten made his Broadway debut in The Winter's Tale. Five years later, the play's writer, Ralph Nelson, cast him in the movie Mama. As for Michael Douglas, his portrayal of Gordon Gecko in Wall Street earned him the rank of 25th greatest movie character of all time by Premiere magazine. Transitioning to more recent events, Van Patten released his book, Totally Terrific TV Trivia, back in 2007. Oh, yeah, if you ask which way the door is. Why would Kimbrough leave the force to go with that? For the money? No, no, with Archie was something per... The 1972 TV series, often referred to as The Streets of San Francisco, left a significant mark on film history. This show, with its compelling storylines and character development, set a standard for future television productions. It was one of the first shows to explore the genre of police procedurals in a realistic and engaging way. The series was filmed on location in San Francisco, which added to its authenticity and visual appeal. This approach was novel at the time, and has since become a common practice in film and television. The city itself became a character in the show, its landmarks and neighborhoods serving as the backdrop for the characters' adventures. The show also launched the careers of several notable actors, Carl Malden and Michael Douglas, who played the two main characters, 
Both went on to have successful careers in film and television. The series provided them with a platform to showcase their acting skills and versatility. Moreover, the show's influence extends beyond its own run. It inspired numerous spin-offs and remakes, including the popular series Starsky and Hutch. The show's format, focusing on a seasoned detective, paired with a younger, less experienced partner, has been replicated in many subsequent shows. In terms of its impact on filmmaking, the series demonstrated the value of location shooting and realistic storytelling. It proved that a television show could be both entertaining and thought-provoking, dealing with serious issues while still maintaining a high level of suspense and drama. In conclusion, the 1972 TV series, with its innovative filming techniques, compelling storylines, and talented cast, has left a lasting legacy in the world of film and television. Its influence can still be seen in many contemporary shows, making it a significant milestone in the history of television. Okay, okay. Found the cabbie who drove him to the airport. Picked him up about six... In the early 1970s, a TV series gained popularity featuring two detectives solving crimes in San Francisco. One of the actors, Darlene Carr, faced a personal tragedy when her young son passed away due to a rare blood disorder called aplastic anemia in 1982. This condition affects the body's ability to produce enough healthy blood cells. Michael Douglas, who also starred in the series, has ties to Hollywood royalty. He is the son of actor Kirk Douglas and Diana Douglas and stepson of Ann Douglas. Unfortunately, the show had one famous detractor, Elvis Presley reportedly refused to watch it. The reason? The character played by Carl Malden shared a name with the man Priscilla Presley allegedly had an affair with causing tension and discomfort for the king of rock and roll. You will think on your partner. The TV series that debuted in 1972 began with a pilot movie sharing the same title. The series was developed by Edward Hume, who wrote the teleplay for the pilot, based on characters from Weston's novel. The series featured well-known actors, one of whom was Carl Malden, in 1971, he found himself accepting the Academy Award for Best Director on behalf of Franklin J. Schaffner, who couldn't attend the ceremony. One of the series' co-hosts, Dick Van Patten, appeared in an infomercial for the Zaken Corp in 2008, alongside Taryn Zaken. These facts reveal the diverse backgrounds and experiences of the talented individuals who contributed to the series' success. I'm about to be a father and I have to have that kind of help. Who did this to you? In the early 1970s, a popular TV series captivated audiences, featuring two talented actors, one of them being Dick Van Patten. After working together in Eight is Enough, Van Patten took notice of his former co-star Willie Ames' successful run on Charles in Charge. Alongside Scott Bio, Van Patten felt proud of Ames' achievements in the industry. Carl Malden, the other lead actor, also had an inspiring journey. Leaving his job at a steel mill at 22, he decided to pursue acting at the Goodman Theater after finding little success in the industrial field. His decision led him to a prosperous career, including his role in the series. Marrying in 1938, Malden and his wife shared a remarkable bond, creating one of Hollywood's most enduring love stories. Their union lasted 71 years, ranking among the top three longest marriages in Tinseltown, just behind Art Linkletter and Lois Forster's 74-year marriage and ahead of Bob Hope and Dolores Hope's 69-year relationship. You went straight home? Yes. In the early 1970s, the television series The Streets of San Francisco featured two notable actors Dick Van Patten and Carl Malden. Van Patten's family had a connection to music legend Michael Jackson, as all three of his sons played basketball with him during their childhood. Meanwhile, Malden's contributions extended beyond acting, as he was honored for his generosity towards the Serbian Orthodox Church, St. Saba, in San Gabriel, California. He received this recognition just six days before his 70th wedding anniversary. Regarding the show itself, Michael Douglas, one of its stars, departed after the second episode of the fifth season. His successful production of the Oscar-winning film One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest led to his departure, and his character's absence was attributed to taking up a teaching job at a nearby college. And here. In the early 1970s, while working on the popular television series known simply as The Show, both Dick Van Patten and Michael Douglas had interests outside of acting. 
As a child, Van Patten aspired to open a pet store, while Douglas shared a home with actress Brenda Vaccaro following their collaboration on the film Summer Tree in 1971. Meanwhile, veteran actor Carl Malden, who also starred in the series, had previously worked alongside Richard Widmark in five movies between 1947 and 1964. These included Kiss of Death, Halls of Montezuma, Take the High Ground, How the West Was Won, and Cheyenne Autumn. Don't worry, they'll find him. In the early 1970s TV series, Dick Van Patten's wife, Pat Poole, had a notable connection to the entertainment industry. She met her spouse on the set of Mama, and stayed married to him for six decades until his passing. Around the same time, a young Michael Douglas appeared in the series. His accomplishments have been recognized with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in November 2018. Richard Hatch, another actor who featured in the show, took his passion for Battlestar Galactica beyond acting. After the initial run, he directed, wrote, and starred in a fan film titled Battlestar Galactica, The Second Coming. With limited resources, Hatch managed to bring together the remaining original cast members through online volunteer recruitment. These virtual teammates contributed their skills from their homes, resulting in varying qualities due to differing expertise levels. Having to get back at number two. I follow you, buddy. Smart thinking. Did you know that the classic TV series, set in the 1970s, has left a lasting impact on many viewers? We'd love to hear about your experiences and memories related to this iconic show. Perhaps you were captivated by the dynamic duo who brought the streets of San Francisco to life, or maybe the show's gritty realism resonated with you. Whatever your connection, we'd love to hear about it. Think back to those days when the show first aired. Did it inspire you to explore the world of cinema? Or did it leave a lasting impression on your perspective of law enforcement and criminal investigations? We encourage you to share your stories with us and other viewers. Tell us how the show impacted you personally or what you think its enduring legacy is in the world of television. And while you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more explorations into the world of cinema. Let's keep the conversation going and celebrate the shows that have left a mark on our lives. You believe Gonzalez? I do. How about you, Captain?